This week we're going to have a look at auditioning different photographs to create artistic compositions using Adobe Stock. What we're going to do right now is we're going to create some uh, creative comps. We're just going to grab images from Adobe Stock and we're going to bring them into Photoshop directly within Photoshop where we can actually put them on layers and experiment and do different things with them. And then if we like what we see at the end, we can actually turn that comp into a final image. Now this is really useful when you're working with clients and different things like that and you want to just kind of kit bash some different ideas together. You can kind of throw these ideas together, throw them around, and then if you get the sign off, then you can go in and you can license the high res image. Now here's a great thing, if you do this right, you don't have to rebuild and redo all your work. It will actually replace it automatically with that licensed high res image and get rid of the watermark. It's pretty cool. I think you're going to like it. All right. So here I am within Photoshop and I'm going to have a little fun. I'm going to create some digital art here. Now, most of the time I actually work with my own photographs, but in this case, we're going to work with Adobe stock. So this is for, you know, people that don't shoot a lot of photographs or maybe this particular photos you just want to experiment with, you know, explore your creative juices, whatever. So let's have a look at this. What we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click here inside of Photoshop. We're going to go in here and we're going to turn on search Adobe stock. But before you do that, you'll notice there's this little option here. You want to make sure that that library is enabled. So just click on that to enable it if it's not. So we're just going to click on here. It's going to take us to the Adobe stock site. And here we go. And so we're at Adobe stock and we're going to do a little search. Um, I'm going to do one here, woman profile hair blowing, and we're just going to click go. So here we go. We can start to scroll through these images here and you can look at any of the photos and you can search. There's tons and tons of photos on here. This used to be uh, Fatoli was actually um, acquired by Adobe and now it's Adobe stock. So I like this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and I'm just going to download this, but notice it says save preview to. So you can click on this little arrow, you can create a new library, or you can select one of your existing libraries. Now these are the same ones that are in your creative cloud library inside of Photoshop. Now I created one called photos that I'm using for my photos. So I just saved that on there. If we want to grab more, we can just click there. We can click there and we're just adding these in there. There's no commitment to anything. So let's save this one to a different folder just to show you how it works. So, um, oops, I scrolled up there, got a little messed up. So we're going to change this to uh, PSC library, which is my main library. I don't really want it to go in there, but I just want to kind of show you how that works. All right, let's go back to Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and here's my regular library right here. And you can see there's that picture. I could double click and it will open it right in there. So there's that photo that we were working on. It shows Adobe stock, it has a watermark on it. And it shows the number on there. That's the image number, but I don't actually want that one. So I'm just going to delete it because I want to keep my PSC library nice and clean because this is my working library that I use all the time. So I'm just going to close this image out and let's now go down to photos. So here we go. There's the photos. There's the ones that we added and there's that particular one. That's the one that I actually really want to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start for canvas. I'm just going to choose a new and I'm going to create a new canvas. And let's make it, we'll go to inches here just for fun. We're going to make it eight by 10. So we're going to go width of 10, height by eight, and we're going to create a, a piece of art here. Make sure that we've got the uh, resolution set to 300, says so print res, and click OK. So there we go. We've got that. There's our canvas there right now. So now I'm going to take this image here and I want to add it into the Photoshop library. So if we um, right click, we can see there's different things here. What we want to do is we want to place a linked one in there. So we're just going to click placed link and then hit enter. And then what it's done is it's created a library linked smart object. So you can see the little icon there. It's very much like the icon you would see in any smart object. But in this case, it's got a little cloud, which means it's linked here to this creative cloud a library file. And that's really important for what we want to do. So now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to drag it across and notice it's kind of low res and it's got the watermark. Don't worry about that for now. So I'm going to duplicate this control J command J on Mac to duplicate it or just drag it into that little new layer icon. Now I want to create a flipped version of it. So I'm going to hit control T that would be command T for free transform. One of my favorite tools use it all the time. And then we're just going to right click or right tap if you're using a Wacom and then choose flip horizontal. Hit enter. 
and now we've got a horizontal version. I'm just going to drag it out a little bit and kind of place it around about here. You know, it looks like, you know, maybe bring it in a little bit. All right, cool. Awesome. So now what I want to do is create a mask. So I'm going to click here to create a layer mask. Now we've got a layer mask. Hit the D key. We reset our foreground background colors. I want to grab the gradient here. And then we're going to go up here and we're going to choose the first option, which is foreground to background. Make sure we're on gradient. Set the mode to normal, 100% opacity. All the other stuff is good. So now we're just going to go inside this mask here. We're just going to click and drag across here. And then what we're essentially doing is we're just masking this out to create a cool little mirror image. Maybe go further out if we don't like how it works. I'm kind of liking where those flowers converge there. That kind of creates a neat effect. So I'm just going to select both of those and just nudge them over a little bit. I'm just being a little OCD right now, but I want to put those right in the center. All right, looking awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I want to create just a, a fade out here because I'm going to do some kind of a movie poster effect. So what I want to do is I want to add another mask in here. So I'm going to select them, but to mask them together, the easiest way to do that is to put them into a group. So we're going to hit Control G, that would be Command G, and that will put the two layers inside a layer group. Very important to keep these layers as a link smart objects, and you'll see why later when we go to convert these to high res. So what I'm going to do is add a mask. Yes, you can add a mask to a layer group. And I'm going to grab my foreground and background and just kind of click up a little bit. Went the wrong way. Let's go more this way. Nice. So we've got this nice little soft fade that's kind of going down. And, um, and let's add some type. So we're just going to click on here and we're going to call this one. Let's call it reflections. All right, so we've created, this is called Reflections. Let's just grab it. Control T, Command T for free transform. Let's make this nice and big. And we're going to drop it right in the middle there. Now, I don't really like that color. I might want to go a little bolder on this. Let's do that. Let's go a little bolder. We're going to go for a bold, nice bold there. And we're going to drag the size up a little bit more. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color because this is kind of a softer thing. So we don't really want to be having... Um, you know stuff that's like too harsh. So we're gonna go down just for a gray nice little gray there Maybe like that looks good. I like that uh, Drop that in the middle now one of the things I really want to do is just be a little bit creative on this um, So this reflection I want to flip that R around so I'm just gonna right click on here and I'm just gonna rasterize the type So there we go. We're just taking that from text to just uh, rasterize so I'm just gonna select it on there and so I've got just that one R selected and I'm going to hit control T for free transform. And now I'm going to flip this one horizontal and then just hit enter to apply it. And we can just nudge it over a little bit. And there we go. We've added our type, just trying to be kind of clever here. So we've got reflections. All right. So let's create a little bit of an effect over this, let's make it a little bit softer. So I'm going to go over there. I'm grab our group and I'm going to grab a layer star and I'm just going to use a solid color. So we're going to do the solid color over the top and I'm just going to give it a kind of a soft, um, a nice kind of a soft pinky kind of a tone. Let's just kind of play around till we get the right kind of color. Maybe there that's looking good, almost like a skin tone, just something very, very soft. That's looking nice. I'm going to change this to color blend mode. So by doing this, what we're doing is we're showing only the color and nothing else. And I'm going to take the opacity all the way down. And then what I'm going to do is just nudge it up just a little bit, just to kind of give it a soft kind of a, a glow kind of effect over there. And that's looking pretty decent. All right. I don't mind that at all. So what I want to do, though, is I'd like to create a kind of a softer version of that on top of it. So I'm going to grab this group. And I'm just going to Control J or Command J and I'm copying that group. Notice it still has those smart objects in there. But I'm going to convert this whole thing into its own smart object. So now I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to a smart object. So we've got all of that wrapped together. If I double click it, you can open it up and you can see everything is still here inside the new document. So I'm just going to close that out. Don't save. And let's go back here. So this is our smart object. And the reason I'm going to do this is I want to apply a smart filter. So I'm just going to choose a filter blur on here. And I'm going to grab a Gaussian blur, our Gaussian blur, and just give it a little bit of a blur effect. Let's just soften that up a little bit. Okay, that should be enough. 
And now we're going to change the blend mode on this thing to, I don't know, something like soft light. So we look at that before and after. Now we're creating, you know, a little bit of a softer effect. We can also drop the opacity down and just kind of bring that up a little bit, kind of tweak it in. I like it there. And you can see that's before and after the color. Maybe it's still too much color in here. I'm going to bring this color down a little bit more. And um, let's have a look at that before and after. Yeah, I would maybe bring it down even more. We want this just to be super, super subtle. So if we look at it before and after, there we go. Just very, very slight amount. And we could also see what it looks like with the type underneath. Notice it doesn't affect it very much at all. It's looking pretty good. All right, so we've kind of created this interesting, you know, just kind of an effect here. And uh, what we want to do now, notice that you can see the Adobe logo and everything is on there. The watermark is on there. If you zoom in, it's not high res. It's very pixelated. So the whole point of this exercise is you can play around with different things, you know, um, and just see what you like. And then if you come across something, you know, once you've been experimenting and working here in Photoshop and you actually like it, and you think, well, you know, this is actually worth doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose licensed image. So now I have that option and it says it will use one of my eight licenses. I've got eight licenses right now because I have the 10 licenses a month. It's one of the plans you can get. So I'm just going to click OK. Notice we've got this little spinning wheel here is going. And what it's doing is it's licensing this image. And then what it's going to do when it's finally done is it's going to update all of these with the licensed version of the image. So notice there, it's kind of showing that. And now you'll notice that the watermark is gone. Not only that, we zoom in and look at this. Now we've got the beautiful high res image right in there. And notice this whole composition. I don't have to redo anything and replace it with high res images or anything like that because it's automatically replaced them with these high, high res images right in here. So now I've got the licensed versions looking beautiful. All my work is still there. Nothing is lost. You know, I might give this a really, really soft effect here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the curves and I just want to just kind of soften that a little bit. So I'm going to go to the shadows and I'm just going to pull those shadows up to just kind of get rid of the solid shadows in there. And um, it's looking quite good. And maybe grab the midtones. Just I could play around with them a little bit. What I'm doing is just bringing back just a little bit of contrast there to the midtones while getting rid of the the shadow. I might just weaken that just a little. It's just a little too strong. There we go. Looking good. And so there we go. You know, it could be an album cover here. Uh, it could be movie poster, whatever you want it to be. But essentially, that's what we do, and that's how we use. Um, Adobe stock to be creative and try the things you want and then if you like them then you can commit if you don't like it then download some more images and just start playing until uh, you find something that you like the one trick is to make sure that you keep these as smart objects the minute you rasterize one of these before you've licensed it uh, it won't be replaced now, now that it's licensed I can rasterize them I can do whatever I want so uh, that's essentially how you do that so thanks for watching. This was fun. I think I'm going to do a few more creative style ones. Uh, so what I want you to do is just to hit that subscribe button. And then when you become a subscriber, then when I do new ones, they'll be pushed to you and you can automatically see them as we're doing different tutorials and kind of getting a little bit more creative in Photoshop. So add a comment down here, hit the like button, tell your friends about it. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.